Hi everyone, I'm Sheridan Elite and welcome to First National Banknotes. In light of this dreaded pandemic, we at First National Bank have not been idle. On the contrary, we've taken a more hands-on approach to being here for both our valued customers and staff in as many ways as we possibly can. In today's program, the Ministry of Education gets a welcome donation of over 20 gallons of hand sanitizer to fight the spread of COVID-19 in schools across the island. First, National Bank partners with the Ministry of Health and Wellness to educate staff on COVID-19. And Managing Director of First National Bank addresses the public on the impending impact of the coronavirus on the banking sector and the nation's overall economy. Stay tuned for the details in this new edition of First National Bank Notes. Born from the same soil, growing stronger. Raised of our own sweat and toil, doing it together. Mm -hmm. Our bank. Welcome back. Before the decision was made to close the nation's schools, First National Bank partnered with members of the private sector to ensure that schools around the island were equipped with hand sanitizers. We are happy to be part of the community today. Representatives from large and small corporate houses came together under the roof of the Bay Gardens Hotel last week to answer an urgent call from the Ministry of Education concerning its plan to fight the potential spread of COVID-19 in schools across the island. Aside from the need for running water and soap at all schools, ministry officials requested a generous supply of 10 gallons or donation towards the purchase of hand sanitizer. According to Chief Medical Officer Dr. Sharon Belma george protecting our schools and our children is pivotal in curbing the spread of COVID-19. Our children may be at school and have very mild disease and be okay, but take it home. So it is extremely important for us to reduce the transmission within the schools because, um, and children are very loving and very huggy and they come and grandparents and parents and aunties. So we know children getting it very mild, they'll, they'll be okay, but the rest of the family who may have diabetes or heart disease or lung disease or kidney or liver disease, they will pose a risk to the rest of the population. It was noted that the private sector's response was quick and very reassuring. First National Bank felt compelled to donate twice the recommended amount, offering the ministry 20 gallons worth of hand sanitizer. According to Executive Manager for Marketing and PR Robert Favre, a pandemic shows no discrimination. This bank was founded really um, on the premise of people looking after people. And this really gives us, you know, a great opportunity to, to really assist, assist the young. Um, I think it, was, it has already been said that um, that is our future. And of course, a healthy nation is a wealthy nation. It also gives us an opportunity to come together as one because um, this disease affects each and every one of us. According to ministry officials, the virus does not affect students and parents alone, but it will also impact work productivity and the economy. Parents, business places, Ministry of Education, Ministry of Health, everybody, we need to come together to work this out. Because what we need to understand is that when we close school, 
not just the schools that are affected, not just the students that are affected, not just the teachers who may decide um, they may stay home or the ministry will tell them it is just the students who are out, you need to come back to the school. But in business places will be affected because the parents now who would have sent their children to school and they would go to work, now they are wondering, but what can we do? Then you have a number of persons, the children are at home, they don't know what to do and then they may call now that they cannot report to work. The Ministry of Education is also urging parents to stay away from fake news and listen for updates through the Ministry of Health and Education to the Chief Education Officer, particularly when it comes to the closure of school. In battle, knowledge and strategy is key to victory, and First National Bank is taking no chances with its employees. The bank partnered with the Ministry of Health to ensure that staff is well informed on the COVID-19 its impact on the country, and how to fight it from spreading. In light of all the misinformation making the rounds on social media, officials from First National Bank felt it was necessary to reach out to the Bureau of Health Education at the Ministry of Health to set the record straight. Employees at various branches were placed in different groups, each scheduled to attend a 30-minute session on all things concerning the novel coronavirus. As you will well understand that everyone have the natural fears and which is understandable and sometimes persons just need this one-on-one -on -one dialogue with somebody officially from the Ministry of Health to help, to help answer questions and clarify a lot of myths and misconceptions that are going around. So one of the benefits of those sessions is that you actually have someone directly here to give the accurate information. According to Mrs. Lambert, two of the most frequently asked questions were about the effectiveness of the use of masks and gloves at the workplace. Executive Manager for Marketing and PR Robert Favre says he was extremely pleased with the level of participation from staff. We felt that it would be a good way of educating our persons from a credible source because, as you know, there's so much information out there. And now that the virus is in St. Lucia, we felt we wanted to educate and sensitize our staff from a local perspective because the, the, the disease has been identified overseas. And so we wanted also to, you know, to let them know of some other measures that are in place because we know the frequent washing of hands and so but um, we wanted some extended information as well so they can continue to practice safe hygiene not just at work but especially at home. As part of its plan to minimize the spread of the virus, First National Bank will be giving its senior citizens and vulnerable customers top priority in order to get them in and out of the bank as soon as possible. You're watching First National Bank Notes. When we come back, Managing Director Mr. Jonathan Johannes on a one on one interview with me talks COVID 19. Next. I'm first and foremost an artist, and I love to be creative. It's all about the passion. When I first came up with the concept of the Thirsty Pirate at Pigeon Point, my brother told me to check out First National Bank. They help small businesses to start and grow. With the help from First National Bank, I created the Thirsty Parrot. I hope, correction, I know that it will become everyone's favorite place. Just like First National Bank, a local place for all. Thank you, Mr. Janice, for sitting in with us today. Um, 2020 has been dubbed the Year of Vision and we are now being faced with this um, pandemic um, coronavirus. Could you share your views on coronavirus? Well, Sheridan, thank you for having me here today. Um, and as you rightfully said, 2020, I think most St. Lucians would have been approaching 2020 and entering 2020 feeling very optimistic about what the year would have brought. And now with the advent of COVID-19, it has forced us to, to, to rethink those plans um, and really start adjusting to, to a new normal. Um, I really need people to understand what this virus represents. It, it, it represents a change in our lifestyle and you can see it and feel it when you walk the streets of Rodney Bay, um, the traffic at the malls, at the restaurants have practically dried up. And we all know it's as a result of the tourists are not coming anymore. Um, what COVID has placed on our country and indeed on the world is two crises at the same time. Um, you have a healthcare crisis, 
and you're faced with an economic crisis. Um, it is my belief, and I think most of the experts share that belief, that we don't have to face a healthcare crisis, and we can avoid the healthcare crisis if we take certain actions. Um, but the economic crisis is here, and it is our new normal and our new reality. Um, there are a lot of concerns, and a lot is being done to see how we can survive this crisis, but I really need people to understand that it is not business as usual. You touched on businesses, and recently First National Bank launched our MSME competency units. How do you see this pandemic affecting the MSMEs? I wish we launched it sooner. Um, at least that we, we would have been able to have provided a lot of support during the better years to help MSMEs build greater resilience for, for events like this. But I wouldn't want to focus on the MSME sector right now because, again, COVID-19 does not respect your size. It does not respect your wealth. It does not respect whether you have a great operation or whether you're just starting up. It doesn't respect anything, really. It's impacting us all, and it's impacting us all in the same way. Um, companies will have to readjust. Um, if you listen to the international news, you'll hear talks of airlines needing up to $300 billion bailouts to survive over the next three months. Um, the auto industry is shutting down plants. Just today, I think, JP Morgan announced that they were going to close a thousand branches. And what, what people need to understand is that it is a war. We are in a war, but the war that we're in is to stop the spread. And, and, and that's my message. We need to do everything it takes to stop the spread of this coronavirus. Because it is my belief that if we can stop that spread and get this under control, a healthy economy needs healthy people. And it starts with getting our people healthy and keeping them healthy. And when that happens, we will be poised for whatever rebounds um, um, that come later on in economic resurgence. But if we let this virus take hold, we will be in a world of hurt for a very long time. So to answer your question, MSMEs will feel it. Large companies will feel it. But most importantly, individual clients will feel it as well. And, and that is where I think I'm most concerned. Um, mothers, fathers, out of work, lowered incomes. How do we continue to survive and how do we look after each other in times like these? What has been First National Bank's response to coronavirus? In, in terms of our response, I think a lot has been done. And, and, and I don't know if I have license to, to respond for all the banks, but I happen to know what a lot of the banks and a lot of business leaders have really been stepping up to the plate. And I want to, to say um, I'm really proud of, of what the business community has been able to achieve. Um, many people may not be aware, but in times of crisis like these, um, no one bank, no one institution, no one company has all the answers. And that is when you really see business leaders coming together at the Chamber of Commerce, at the Bankers Association, at the Hotel and Tourism Association, and really forming those think tanks to come up with a great approach to, it, to, to tackling this virus. There's been a lot of ideas shared, and some of the things we practice in, uh, installing hand sanitizers in, in banking halls and providing personal hand sanitizers to all frontline employees in common gathering areas, we're doing the same with the hand sanitizers, to really promote that hand hygiene message. Um, we're also looking at so practicing social distancing in our workplace. As a matter of fact, um, we will be moving to limit the amount of people that could access the branch at any one time. I hope our clients understand that um, and why we are doing it is to help win the war on the spread. And I know another a number of other banks are doing the same thing. Um, we're also looking at some work from home options for some of our employees. We're looking at 
early departures um, for employees so that we don't place a burden on the transportation system where everybody is, is at a bus stop at 5 35 o'clock trying to get home practicing bad social distancing if you want to call it that so there are a number of things we are doing to keep employees safe and to keep customers safe but one of the ones that I, I really want to focus on is that I know most companies if not all have intensified their cleaning regimes and, and customers need to understand that at some points during their transactions during their interactions in our branches things will come to an extreme halt for our cleaners to go through and do that intermediary cleaning to just ensure that the environment is safe for everyone that interacts with us. So, so um, many companies have introduced it and, and, and we are no different. So we are following suit and I think all the companies in St. Lucia are really doing what they can to help stop the spread of COVID-19. I think the bigger question that everybody wants to know is, okay, so that's what you're doing to stop the health crisis, right? When this economic reality hits, how are, you, how are you as a banker, how are banks going to approach this situation to ensure that there is some relief to clients and to the nation to help us get back on our feet, um, to help the economy stand the chance of restarting when, when, when this happens? And I, I, I want to say this, um, we are going to treat this as a crisis. And if you, if you think back to whenever our nation has been faced with a crisis, whether it be a natural disaster or, or an economic crisis, um, the banks have always responded positively. The public can rest assured that the Bankers Association is having high-level discussions with the Ministry of Finance um, and the Central Bank um, to come up with a unified, resilient approach to what a relief package would look like. Um, it takes some time to, to put it in place, but we are working diligently. And I mean, we'll do what we have done every time our nation has faced crisis, and that is support our clients, support these co companies, and support the government and the economy. So you can count on the banks to be there for you. And now I could turn to First National, and I could say it's in our tagline, right? here for you. So at a moment like this, we will continue to be here for you. Um, I've heard of banks reducing their charges already on, on, on e-channel usage. Um, at First National, our e-channels have always been free and it's something that we want people to really use this week and what's left um, of, of the time to sign up for those e-channels so that you can really not come into the branch to do a lot of the transactions you do. Get your debit card so you can use that instead of cash. Sign up for more banking so you can move money from accounts, transfer between accounts, pay your credit cards, pay your utility bills without having to engage in social interactions. It's, it's, it's time for us to adjust the way we do business. And if there's one silver lining that can come out of this, is that maybe it will move us along a bit faster into adopting new technology and moving more to a cashless society. So again, practice that social distancing and let's see how we can get that right. Mr. Joannis, thank you once again for taking the time to sit in with us. I know you have a busy schedule. And like Mr. Joannis said, let's practice social distancing. As you could see, he's practicing social distancing from his barber. Unfortunately, we've now come to the end of this week's episode of First National Bank Notes. Don't forget to wash your hands often with soap and water. And I know this might be hard for some of us, but avoid touching your face as much as possible. Avoid contact with sick people. Stay home if you're sick and cover your mouth and nose with your sleeve or tissue when coughing or sneezing. We all have to play our parts and trust that we'll come out of this pandemic okay. Students, if you're watching, keep your brains active and use this extra time wisely. Our new temporary business hours at all locations will be from 8 a.m. to 12 noon, Monday to Friday. Unfortunately, the bank will be closed on Saturdays. Also, take note that one hour from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. 
will be allotted to our senior citizens, vulnerable persons, and essential services providers in uniform. All other valued customers can come in from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. You could view this show again right here every Wednesday on HDS at 8 p.m. or go online at www.firstnationalbankonline.com. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm Sheridan Elite. Please, St. Lucia, stay safe. See you next time. And remember, First National Bank is here for you.